Hi everyone, Michael Swade here. I'm a former sailor and certified master helmsman with thousands of hours of experience driving ships in all sorts of complex evolutions like harbor transits, underway replenishments, and carrier battle group formations. In this video, I'm going to share some of my thoughts on the incident that led up to the collapse of the Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor by the container ship MV Dolly. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of ship handling physics and why I believe the incident to be an accident and not a nefarious plot to destroy the bridge. Um, I just want to add that I'm not entirely ruling out some kind of conspiracy. Uh, it's just that based on the data I've observed in my professional experience, I would need to see some kind of evidence of sabotage before I believe this was anything other than an accident. So what you're looking at here is a piece of software called Nautis. It's a ship simula simulator used by a professional maritime industry to train ship handling. Uh, the graphics might not look like much, but it has a highly detailed and complex phys physics engine that provides a very accurate representation of how ships actually behave. So this software is all about the physics, not so much about the graphics. Uh, on the left, you can see a map of Baltimore Harbor showing the actual track that the MV Dolly took just before she crashed into the bridge. And uh, a few things that are worth noting about this. Uh, the harbor channel is the white band that's running out of the harbor. And you can see that this harbor transit is actually quite dangerous with the channel running right up against the pier of the bridge. It's very close, very tight between that bridge pier and the harbor, uh, the, the transit passage. So looking at the track that Dolly took, her aft end was actually still in the outer bounds of the channel when she hit the bridge. So there's very little room for error in this transit. So she only deflected off course maybe 10 degrees, but that was enough to cause a catastrophe. So the ship I have loaded up in the simulator is a 130,000 ton displacement container ship. It's very similar in size to the Dolly. I think the Dolly is around 160,000 tons of displacement. So the simulator is going to behave very closely to how Dolly would behave. Uh, it might turn a tiny bit sharper and slow down a tiny bit faster, but it's going to be very similar. So my plan here is to recreate as best I can the conditions that led to Dolly veering off course and striking the bridge. So to do that, I'm going to accelerate the ship to about eight and a half knots. And then when I get within about a half mile of the bridge, I'm gonna cut the power and lock the rudder to simulate the power outage. And I'll hold that for about one minute, which is about the time that Dolly was without power. So let me point out a few things here. The lever on the, the, lever on the bottom of the screen you see me swinging back and forth is the rudder control. But the needle you see moving in the upper left is the actual rudder angle indicator. So the rudders on a ship are not like steering a car. Uh, when I turn the wheel, it takes some time for the rudders to actually catch up to the angle I'm commanding them to be at. So as I'm steering, I have to anticipate some lag in my steering commands. Um, on a ship, there's a conning officer who issues directions to the helmsman, directing them, uh, directing them on how they should steer the ship. So the con could be the captain, a junior officer, or even the pilot, depending on the situation. Uh, the most common type of direction given to helmsman is to steer a particular course. So in this case, I'm steering a course of 142. So you'll see me swing back and forth trying to maintain that course. So notice how I'm making, constantly making rudder inputs uh, in order to maintain that course. I'm swinging the rudder left 10 degrees, right 10 degrees. I'm constantly making inputs because at slow speeds like this, uh, the rudder inputs at 10 degrees or more are, are very common. It takes a lot of rudder to get the ship turning in the direction you want it to go. So right now I have the simulator set to a one knot tail current and I believe a one knot, uh, maybe a six knot headwind. I think that's pretty similar conditions to what was going on at the time. Uh, <clears throat> so it's my belief that the course correction of the rudder played an important role in the Baltimore incident. So steering on a ship is controlled by hydraulics that require a lot of electrical power. 
and if the power goes out on a ship, the hydraulics will lock the rudder in the last position it was in before the power went out. So these cargo ships do have an emergency backup genera generator that they can use to get the main engines and generator started again, but it's about the size of a truck engine. It's not designed to provide full power to the ship. Uh, it might provide backup steering power, so we'll just assume that it does. And we'll just go with one minute without power with the rudder lock. And we're gonna see what happens with that. Uh, I've actually been on a warship in a similar, similar situation. So thankfully not during a harbor transit, but it goes to show that if it can happen on a warship with far more redundant systems than a cargo ship, it can certainly happen on a cargo ship. So, uh, and a side note about redundancy, I, I hear a lot of conspiracy talk about the two missing minutes of data on the Dolly's data recorder. And that missing data is from the two minutes of power loss that Dolly experienced. So the voice recorder kept recording, only the voice recorder had a battery backup. So we have the voice data, there's just no steering and propulsion data. And if you think about it for a minute, you realize that during a power outage, the ship can't steer or propel itself anyways, so there's nothing to even record. There's really no conspiracy here. It's just how the data recorders are wired into the ship's power system. Additionally, because of this, the steering as well as the data recorder are tied to the ship's power, it doesn't make any sense for a malicious actor to target the ship's power system if their goal is to intentionally cause the ship to hit the bridge. Uh, a much more enticing target would be the ship's steering control systems. So it's not it's not possible to target the bridge if you can't steer the ship. So uh, moving on from that, when we get to around about a half mile from the bridge, you'll see me cut the power and lock the rudder to about 14 degrees to starboard to simulate a power outage during a course correction. So we know the pilot requested that the port anchor be dropped and the daytime pictures do show the port anchor in the water but I don't really think this made a difference. And you'll see in the simulation that it really doesn't. Um, anchors are designed to hold a stop ship in place. And even then, uh, wind and currents can cause the ship to drag its anchor on the bottom. And uh, the anchor is not even really what holds the ship in place. It's the weight of the anchor chain that actually does all the work. So the simulator allows us to directly throw the engines into, into the reverse. But I believe uh, the dolly engines have to be brought to complete stop and then reversing gears have to be engaged in order to run the engine in reverse. So I'm not going to use reverse thrust for the simulation. I'm just going to kill the engines. So let's see here. We're coming up on a half mile. But before we get there, I've seen a lot of people asking why there were no tugs escorting the ship out of the harbor. So tugs escorting a ship all the way out of the harbor would be highly unusual. Tugs typically are used only to help a ship get off the pier, and that's pretty much it. In the MV Dolly's case, the Dolly was already beyond the point where tugs were required. And taking tugs along actually poses its own set of dangers. So because ships like the size of the Dolly are so big, they could easily drag a tug underwater, snap lines once it gets up to speed. And you'll see that with the anchor chain. When the anchor chain drops in simulation, it, it hardly does anything. And if that was a tug that was tied to it, the, it would, the dolly would just drag the tug on, right under the water. It would yank the front of the boat into the water and like a scupper and just scoop out a ton of water and, and drag it right under. So none of that, the, the, the lack of tugs. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I've killed the engines. I've got the rudder locked at 14 degrees, and I'm waiting for about one minute. And then after a minute passes, you're going to see me swing the rudder hard to port. So I'm going to try my best to, to avoid hitting that pier. And you'll see what happens. And uh, sorry sorry to spoil it, but uh, I do hit the pier. <laughs> so here we are. We're making our approach. And I'm about the same distance out from the, the pier as Dolly was on the track. You can see it's a very, very tight, close passage to that pier in Boston Harbor. So here I go, I'm bringing up the anchor, and on the, the dolly they drop the port anchor, so I'm gonna do the same. And there goes the chain. So now I'm letting out the chain. I'm gonna let out 200 meters before I lock it up.
We're about to lock. There we go. We're locking, putting the brakes on. So now our chain is dragging on the bottom, trying to bring us to the stop. And you can see we're still doing over seven knots. And the ship's behaving almost exactly like the dolly did in the video. We're now swinging the port. We're kind of lining back up with the channel. But we're going to hit that pier. It might not quite look like it in the video, but that's it, it does collide. And you'll see the, the speed stop once it hits. So that's it. You see the speed drastically falling off as it scraping against the pier there. So that's that's really all it took. So I, I hope you got from the simulation that it's common to make course corrections to have the rudder swinging back and forth 10, 15 degrees because of the slow speeds in the harbor. Totally common. And um, when that uh, if that rudder just happens to be locked over to the starboard side when the power goes out, it's going to stay there, and if you leave it there for one minute, you see what can happen. In a channel passage that tight, it's going to run the ship right into the pier every time. So uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something here, and uh, thanks for watching.